the about the one and the lex order so can hana help me share just the beginning of rubno basis okay so i just read through from the beginning yeah hana okay that is fine so we have a polynomial ring all right and you have to see over the field so if you are given that k is replaced by r is replaced by z that means the coefficient of the polynomial so it can change but it's over a field k so you know z is not a field right there is no inverse for that one so normally we will put the over the the real numbers okay and you feel okay so k is the field of rational if it is integer that will be integer modulo a prime number because z p is a field right because it has the inverse okay go down i mentioned about algebraic variety so algebraic variety is a set and it's a set of all common zeros. Before this, we call it the roots, right? So here we call it the zeros, right? So go down. So for example, if I give you in the set x plus one, x squared minus one, so the common zeros will be x equal negative one. So something like this. You equate both to zero, okay? So go down. That's the ideal i, smallest ideal containing all those polynomials in the field R. So all the ci is reals. Okay, that is the coefficient that I mentioned just now. Okay, then go on to the basis for the our ideal. So remember our ideal, they are all polynomial rings. Okay, so next. Go down a little bit where we can see here. Yeah. Next, okay. Every ideal has a finite basis. You will be given a set of basis of polynomials, okay? And you have to know how to do the division algorithm. I did that in the last class in which you do long division. Okay, next. Okay. All right, so this one, so our polynomials in the polynomial ring will have this form, coefficient, and then the x to a power. Okay, like in the last time I have x y squared, x squared y squared, right? Or two x squared y cubed. So it's in the form of this kind of polynomial. So we <clears throat> have this expression p in the form of the product of power of the variables, all right? So for example, down there you see it's x, z squared. So the polynomial is in the three unknowns, three variable x, y, z. So when I say about x, z squared, where is the y? So it's just x to the y, x to the one, y to the zero, z squared, right? And then I mentioned about this, I asked you to read this through, but this class, I'll just go over it. Total ordering, you know, last time I mentioned you had to read about this one, the total ordering, right? So one is the power product, go down, with all exponent zero. So when we have something like this, x, y, probably x, y, z, you can have a polynomial like in this form, right? So when I say one is in this, that means one is actually all power of zero. That is just the identity polynomial, right? And in this power product, in this, in the power product of this uh, all exponent, one is always less than whatever it is, less than x, less than y, right because it's always a power of zero all right so if you multiply by x you will get this is always true so when you multiply by x you will get like this right 
If you multiply by y, you will get multiply, sorry. If this is also less than y, if you multiply by y, you will get, right? You multiply everything by y. Okay. Now go down the properties. Okay, the ordering of the power product. Right, so whatever it is, you will have one is always less than P. One is always less than P for whatever power product is, right? And if you have two power product PI and PJ, okay, if you have two power product PI and PJ, Our product is in multiplying, right? Then it has to be less or bigger or equal. Less, bigger, or equal. All right? Then if you have like transitivity, if PI less than PJ, PJ is less than PK. So PI has to be less than PK. Where do we use this? We use this when you want to find the group basis. When you want to see whether you can divide or not, right? Is it bigger or not? Whether you can divide, okay? And the last one is if you have PI less than PJ, then whatever it is you multiply, whatever it is you multiply in front, it will also be like the numbers, right? Like the numbers. Okay, go down. Now, this is when I mentioned about this last time. I hope you have read it through. Okay, this is called the lexicographical order. All right. And we define this, we define one is less than another one depending on the subscript. So if it's, it's given that the uh, other one, I wrote this before, right? One is less than y, less than y squared, and so on. It's always this. And then if you have y is less than x, and then you introduce x, <clears throat> then you have xy here, okay, xy, xy squared, and so on, right? So this is the leading term, and <clears throat> when we call down there, the leading term will be 1, when you multiply two like this. So when uh, the, the first one is just one, we call it the leading term, yeah? the leading term of F. And one <clears throat> PF is the leading, the power product of the leading form. Okay, then, uh, then it's the rest, right? I, uh, you can stop sharing. Okay, so today is about the extension field and vector space. If you have the sun hands with you, if you have the sun hands not with you, he give the, there is no page number, yeah? He already gave rings of polynomials in part two, okay? Unique factorization theorem. And then he give extension field, okay? But I will repeat this. <clears throat> right, and he gave Kronika theorem. He gave an example. 
of extension field. More examples. Degree tower law. Minimal polynomial. Degree of extension and simple extension. Okay. He actually gave a lot of this. Right. Okay, what actually do we mean? Why do we need extension field? Okay, in a given field, sometimes we cannot solve in a polynomial. We cannot find the zeros or we cannot find the roots. As an example, if you have px equal this, right? And your field is R. <clears throat> Can you get the roots or the zeros? Why and why not? So if you let this equal to zero, you will get x squared is negative one. There is no real number in which the square is negative one. Right? What is actually the root? So if we extend the field into C, complex number, right? Then you can get X is this, which is square root of negative one is I, right? Because now I is in C. So the moral of the story is why we need extension field is somehow we cannot find the root given a certain field. So we need to add on, okay? This is what we call it extension field. So this polynomial has no root or no zeros in this field real, but it has these roots or zeros in the extension field. So we write C to be R adding in the I. Okay. Instead of R, it's just this. We add C to be, right? And now, uh, sorry. Sometimes we write like this, right? Or i is square root of negative one. So we extend from r into c by adding the i because a d is still real, but we are adding this. So we extend to i. So this is what it means by extension, right? So, so the main goal is we want the polynomial to be reduced. Reduced means it can be factored, right? So instead of writing this, now if the field is C, we can write this as this. Right? Then it can be reduced or factored. All right. Okay, so why do we have vector space in this chapter? If you remember, you learn vector space in linear algebra. Okay. Our vector space, mostly they are all under reals. So now we extend this. So elements of the scalars are elements of a field. Instead of before you remember the 10 axiom for vector space. So we have C in R, right? So in this chapter, in this class, our C is not only in R, but C is in F. Okay, C is in F. Let me write a formal definition of extension field. Okay, so I call it definition. Okay. The notes have been uploaded in the e-learning, right? You see it, right? 
Yeah? Yes? No? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, that is after lunch, right? In Malaysia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the notes is in the e-learning. If any of you at any time has trouble in getting in e-learning, or you are not registered to be in the e-learning because you just joined the class, you can just let me know or ask the others. Yeah? Ozia? Are you here? <laughs> okay. All right. So you can uh, look if you haven't had the time to look at it after the class, right? So what is an extension field? A field E is called an extension field of a field F if F contains in E. Okay, sometimes we call it like subfield, right? A subfield. So sometimes people use that, but we put it here because of that one objective. It's an extension, so we can reduce the polynomial. Reduce means we can factor the polynomial. All right. Okay. Now I have given you example 12.1 that the complex numbers is an extension of the real numbers, okay? Now, can someone give me another example? <laughs> How do I solve? Right? If, if my, if my field is this, okay, this one is a rational number. Okay, so for this chapter, make sure you know what a field is, right? A field is, what is a field? Hassan, you gave me the answer last time. How are you, Hassan, today? Alhamdulillah, Prof. I'm okay. Yeah? Okay. What is a feel? Feel Q? No, what is a feel? What's the definition of it? Oh, feel. A feel is a uh, commutative ring with unity that uh, uh, every non zero element is a unit. A unit. Okay. A non commutative ring with unity. Unity is the identity and the multiplication. Okay. Commutative ring with unity such that every non zero element, because zero cannot be a unit, non zero element is a unit, meaning every element in the set has a an inverse under multiplication. All right. So yes. that's why integers, there is not a field. Because like number two, what do you want to multiply two with to get unity? One, right? One over two is not integer. So rational number, yes. If it's not zero, what is the inverse? The inverse is, we call it like this, right? The inverse is b over a, non-zero, right? So this is a field. How do I add to this to get the zeros of this? So you see, square root two, right? And square root two is not a rational number. This is another common 
one question. Okay, I want to see your hand if you have one day or one time prove this or have seen the proof. That's me. <laughs> Anyone else? Don't tell me you have not seen the proof. <laughs> Hannah? Yes or no? I think yes, during the theory one, but I don't remember from. <laughs> Ayn? I don't remember. I think the same answer as Hana. <laughs> like I, I have met, I have seen before, but I don't remember yeah. how. <laughs> have you seen this proof? Uh, yes, I think best, but I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those in group theory one, you will answer the same thing. What about Fosia? You were not in my group theory one. <laughs> yes, teacher, I see it before. You've seen this before. Either mm. you and you remember or not, it's another <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mariam. I didn't see uh, th that before. I didn't see uh, that before. Do you remember how to prove that? No. <laughs> what about Amrina? Amrina? Have you seen this before? Where are you? <laughs> I cannot hear you, Amrina. I don't know. It look like your mic is okay, but I don't. <laughs> this is very important. Okay, if you want to claim, <laughs> what does that mean? Have this. <laughs> Can you try and talk, Amrina? I talk. <laughs> Then you can chat. Okay, if you cannot use the mic, if the mic, <laughs> you can type. Okay. Have you seen? Have you ever seen the proof? Do you remember? That's another. <laughs> if you claim, yeah, should be, right? If you claim that you are a mathematician, you have to know how to prove this. <laughs> okay. So we prove by contradiction. Suppose it is, right? So you prove by contradiction. So suppose this is a rational number, meaning that you can write as the fraction in which it has no common factors, right? And then you square, right? You square both sides, you will get this, right? When you square both sides, and you can write a squared is 2b squared. And this will give you that they have common factors. When the square is 2b squared, that means a is a multiple of b, so this is not true. So this is what you want to show that is a contradiction, right? By using the fact that i dot 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 here, okay? If this squared is 2b squared, you also learn this, right? In in uh, number theory or before, when this is this, this square is this square. If this is even, this is odd, right? 
if the square is even, then it has to be even, right? So if if a squared is even, a squared is even, a has to be even, right? And b also have to be even. So if a and b are both even, the GCD has to be two, not one, right? So when the GCD is two, this is not anymore true. So this is not equal to a over b. So square root two is not a rational number. Hey, I erase the whole problem. <laughs> so that's why I said if you have px equal x squared minus two and your f is r, you have to have an extension field putting in this. Then you can solve, right? Then you can solve this to be plus or minus square root of two. All right, so this is why you have this. So make sure, don't forget, the next time people ask, ask you, you have to remember, this is how you show it, it's very basic, it's how you prove it, right? It's not that difficult. Okay. This is the fact using if, if uh, a squared is even, a is even. I'm sure you learned this when you first learned about proving, right? It's hard to show this way, so you show this way, right? Contrapositive is A is odd, A squared is odd. That is easier, right? If A is odd, A squared is odd. Because 2K plus 1 squared is something plus 1. All right, I'm not going to teach you again. This is in discrete math or number theory or what you learned before in your class. I'm not sure. But let me move on to another definition that I've mentioned this setting before algebraic variety, but let's do this again. About the algebraic, yeah? Algebraic N, algebraic N, trans, trans, transcend, transcend the Numbers. I hope I spell it right. Transcendental. Right? So an element A, an element A of an extension field E of a field. F is algebraic over F if F A is do I use A? Is that alpha? An element alpha of an extension field E of a field F is algebraic over F if F of alpha is zero. Okay. For some non zero, for some non zero polynomial in F. For some polynomial in If alpha is not algebraic over F, then alpha is Transcendent over okay. So the extension field is the bigger one. So this is E here. This is F.
So the element alpha is in the extension field of a field F. Okay, let's look at one example, yeah? Okay, so let F is R. Let F is R. I've done this before, but I do it again. Then you can match with the definition. Fx is x squared plus 1. So this has no zeros in R, right? This has no zeros in R. So this one, yeah. So it's mentioned, I mentioned in the, the generate, uh, we, when we generate x squared plus one, it's a maximal ideal. So we take the quotient, it's a field. Okay, now we want to see the, Alpha <clears throat> the alpha actually in this case is the extending extending alpha to to be the the zeros. So when you extend, when you put in this as before, then this becomes your extension field. Okay, I'll, I'll skip that one. <clears throat> okay, the second example is the one I just give just now. <clears throat> I better use a different color. Now let the C, the complex, and C and Q. It's not Z, yeah? It's not Z, it's Z is not a field. Hana, it's not Z, it's Q. C is an extension field of Q. Well, actually Z is in C, that's right. But actually Z is not a field. Now the polynomial is, x squared minus 2s before. And the zero, when you equal to zero, x is square root 2. So, so I don't need yet this because I want to combine with this, right? So there's another one, oh, that's, that's another one. <coughs> So this one, right, this one is a root if you have this, because x equals square root 2. So when you combine with q, this has a 0, right? Has a 0. <clears throat> OK. Then from here to here, you have this. When you want to go straight from well, actually, there is an R, right? There is R here. Okay, so you can do extension depending on the polynomial you are given. Let me start over with another example. <clears throat> okay. So if we have I want a fill. I want a fill. Okay, so if I have Q 
Q here. And this is the polynomial. If I want it to be a zero, so I have to add, all right? Because when you equal this to zero, X is this, okay? So this is not <coughs> a zero here, but it is here. If I want this over, uh, this can be over Q also, then I will add here I, because if I solve this, I need I, okay? So I can put here R, R, I, that's okay. R, R, I is also okay. Okay, next example. It's the other way around. The, the next question is to see whether a real number is algebraic or not. Okay, so you are given, so that one is number one, is number two, three, number four. <coughs> Show alpha equal is algebraic over You have to find the polynomial. Okay, you have to find the polynomial in which this is a root. And you have to see that the polynomial has coefficient in Q. I give you two minutes to solve and find the polynomial in which this is a root. Meaning you have to get rid of the square root. Square both sides. Okay. All right, so straightforward, right? Square both sides. Then you have to move this one side. Then you square again, right? Square again. Okay, and then you have alpha to the fourth minus two alpha squared plus one equal three, alpha to the four minus two alpha squared, but minus two is zero. So this is the polynomial. And this is in Q, right? In QX. So this is N algebraic. 
number over q. Okay. Clear, right? Can I see your thumb? Is it clear or not? Ah. Uh, if I have something weird inside here, like cube, cube here, you have to do it until you don't see a square root. We don't want any square root because Q has no any square root or third root. For example, if you have something like alpha is Ah, <laughs> try find the polynomial. Okay. Okay. Who want to volunteer? You cannot come to the board, whiteboard, but you can just say it. <laughs> Amrina, your mic doesn't work. <laughs> Lava, can you just guide me? What do I have to do? I will write. <laughs> uh, just cute book site. Cube both side, cube both side, right? Cube. So this is gone, right? Because this is to the power of one. So you have only one minus two times. Okay, next. Uh, next, uh, just shift the one right here to the left. Here. Uh, yes. Bring one here so I can get. Okay, and then. Uh, maybe cube again. Cube again, right? Cube again because we have this cube here. So you cube. That is negative here, right? So what do you get when you cube? You remember? <laughs> Right? So that is the binomial. So that means you alpha the nine, right? Cube, cube. Okay. And then the next one is three minus three alpha squared. So alpha to the six. Then uh, B squared, so this is plus three alpha cube. The one negative one squared is one. And then minus one. Equal negative eight times three. Negative 16, right? So this is the fx equal. Like this. You write until the end. <laughs> and this is in? Right? Okay, so this is how. So the key is you have to use whatever you learn from before calculus, linear algebra, modern algebra, number theory, <laughs> right? That's why that is a prerequisite for everything, right? You remember this, right? You know how do I get this number? Who remember? Who remember? Uh, prof, only, only uh, dot A plus B, 
three times. After that, we, we can contain this uh, quotient. What, what about if I have the four? What's the number? If you remember, <laughs> right? Is it right? You learned this before, right? The binomial, you learned this before, but there's a sum, right? Hmm. So k from zero until n, right? That's the binomial. So if k is zero, the first one, it is always, or you can, you can do both ways. You can do the bigger one first, right? This one is okay, you can put here first. If k is zero, you get the first one, k to the nine. So this one is actually three choose one. This is three choose zero, three choose one. Three choose two, three n choose k, and the last one is three choose three, right? That is the quick way. Otherwise, you have to multiply three times, four times, and then you tell me you don't have enough time for your test or for your final. <laughs> this is how I remember, but I remember it this way. You remember this? What is the name? Anna? <laughs> what is this? This for uh, multiplication to, to number is a ray plus B. One time, two times, three times. It's a Pascal triangle, right? So this, is actually this Pascal triangle. That's why when you have N, this N, when N is two, you get A squared plus two AB plus B squared, one, two, one. When you get A plus B cubed, you get that. Who is outside? <laughs> one, three, three, one. One, three, three, one. So I said, what is A plus B to the four? B four. B to the four. No, four, to the four plus, plus four. Four, A three. A three, A three B. B. Six. Plus six, A two B. Four, plus four, A B three. Plus, plus B3, B4. So you see, these two, when you add, it's always N. One is going up, one is going down. Three, two, one, zero. The B, zero, one, two, three. So you can actually do the next one very quickly, right? One. I don't have enough whiteboard. <laughs> five, 10, 10, five, one. So if people give you this, you can just say A to the five plus five, A for B plus 10, A cubed B squared plus 10, A squared B cubed plus five, A B to the four plus B to the five, right? And this one is actually, you don't want to do this Pascal triangle like 20 times if I, I ask about 20. So you can do using the combinatorial formula. So that is how I got this quickly. Okay, that is not group theory two. <laughs> All right, so next is the degree of an extension.
again, let E be an extension field of a field F. So E, F, okay? And alpha is algebraic over F, over F. So you have extend then, then degree of alpha over F, oh, now I use A, eh? sorry. I just want to make sure I use the right. Okay. Degree of A by F is degree of F in Fx such that Oops. When you evaluate A in F is zero. Wait, 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 wait. So degree of an extension field is the degree of the polynomial in which when you evaluate, you get zero. Okay. Sorry, yeah. There is a typo. Hannah, there is a typo. The degree of the extension field is the degree of the polynomial such that A is the zero of that polynomial. Get it, Hana? you get it? All right. I think you can think and try to use the example that I gave before and you have in mind what is the degree. Okay. All right. So if we have alpha or A algebraic over a field, we call it an algebraic number. Otherwise, we call it a transcendental number. Okay. And uh, there is a theorem that says that if you have a field and you have a polynomial, but you don't want a constant polynomial, you always have an extension field and also a root. So every whatever field that there is, you can always extend. So a given alpha in that extension field has a root. Okay, you can always extend. Okay, now let's see. I need to I need to give an example, yeah. Okay. If you look at the vector space before I give an example of this, I mentioned that you have learned this in linear algebra just that I change the constant C into element of F of field. So that's the difference. I'm not going to go into uh, the detail of this vector space. But I want to use Dr. Sanhan's. Do you have Dr. Sanhan's notes with you? Okay, let's go through the example yeah? he didn't put 
Okay, we didn't put any page number in. Is it Hana? And uh, Dr. San Han used this as the fill extension. That is how some authors use that. But I put adding like for the extension, the degree, right? I, will, I will put like this. And some authors, they put the degree to be something like slash okay this is just yeah example yeah What's the degree of this over this? And this is two because our polynomial is of degree two, of degree two, right? And this, the index is not really index, but the degree of the extension field. It's also two because our polynomial is of degree two. Okay. If I change this with R, also it's two. Now, what is the degree of R over Q? If Dr. Uh, San Han, he just use slash, right? But this is in the notation. How do you extend? Some, sometimes we have something like this, right? This under here is Irreducible, irreducible, meaning there is no zeros, right? Because the zeros will be square root two plus minus square root two. It's not in Q, so we can extend to R. Okay, but then we also have something like this, right? So this is of degree two, this is of degree three, right? So Dr. Sahan also put this in his notes that this has degree, infinite degree, right? Infinite degree. Then I have, again, another one, but you see this also of degree two, because you just extend, right? You just extend this, which has degree two. That's a polynomial, okay? And also, this has degree two. And uh, also, you need to know about a basis of the extension field, okay? So a basis for this would be one and square root two. A basis of this is one square root two. A basis of this is one in i. So the number of this is the one in the basis. Okay. Any element in here can be written as a spanning of this, right? We generate. So that's the basis. Okay. And then there is a tower law theorem. Hannah, next time in my notes, can you help me add this as my example in my notes? I always write this, but I didn't have the time to type. <laughs> now <laughs> you can help me add on to my notes, yeah? 
Okay. And also the Tower Law. Suppose we have K, the subset of M, the subset of L are fields. Okay, now the first one is the extension, the extension L to the K. Can I put like this? Or if we use Dr. Sanhan's, we use like L over K. The extension of L over K is finite if and only if both the extension LM and MK are finite. And if L over K is finite, then the then the degree, okay, then the degree, the degree is this times this. So sometimes you have one above, okay, for the extension. Okay. Now let's see. As an example, let L, so you have something like this. Okay, here. And then you have M here. Then you have L. Okay. M. Okay, so as an example, if you have like this, okay, as K, M, and L, you know this is two. You know this is degree two because of this polynomial and this one also degree two because of this polynomial because you adding up i right so this has this as a basis this has this is the basis. So by this tower law theorem, you have that. Oops, yeah. This. Okay. Two times two. And the basis would be one square root two i square root 2i. Okay. Sometimes people put i square root 2. Okay. I give you an example of algebraic number, right? Like this one. Right? Hmm. 
because uh, we see fx is x squared minus 2, right? It's in qx. This square root 2, this square root 2 is not in q. It's not in q. I can change this as q square root 2 also, right? But this is algebraic because we have this in Q. Now, phi phi is phi algebraic. Right? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. Because what is the can you write like this? It's it's a zero, but pi is not in Q, right? Pi is not even not even um rational number. Pi is not a rational number, right? Although square root two is not rational, cannot put as a over b, but we can square. Right and get two. What about e? Also, right? It's dot 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 dot. You can never find the polynomial. So pi and e are transcendental numbers. What? You can never find that. Okay. Again, I can put I also here, right? I. I is also algebraic over Q because X squared minus 1. Yeah. Okay. And just now I said. Also, the one algebraic would be something like 1 plus square root 3 is also algebraic over Q. It's not in Q, but it's algebraic over Q. You can square, you can do all this. If I put again another one, like just now, you did this, so it's power of 4, right? Okay, I think that's this. Minimum polynomial is just the minimum polynomial that you need to be a root. Because if you have this is a polynomial, one is a root. If you multiply by two, this is also has one as a root, but this is not minimum. This is minimum polynomial. So if you see the word minimum polynomial, Okay. Okay, one more. One more. Word is also they use splitting field. Okay, splitting field. I want you to find yourself what it means. what it means by splitting field. Okay, splitting field. Hannah, can you Google and read what is a splitting field? Now it's very easy, right? You don't have to go to the library. Like during my time, there is no, not even email. 
I had to write letter. You imagine if you come to Malaysia, the international student, you want to contact your family. Now you can just call, WhatsApp, email. During my time, I had to write a letter. Snail mail, post. 10 days to come to Malaysia. <laughs> it's like 30 years ago. Yeah, Hana? Okay, it is the smallest field extension of that field over which the polynomial splits are decomposed into linear factors. Hmm. Can you share that? All right. If before, maybe it's hard to understand, right? What it means. Right now, after we've been through all this, I think it's much clearer, okay, what a splitting field is. A splitting field of a polynomial with coefficient in a field okay, is the smallest field extension in which the polynomial splits or decomposes into linear factors. So you go down a little bit. All right. So we multiply by linear factors, right? If you have like just now, I show you x squared plus one, right? X squared plus one. It's x, what is it? X squared plus one? Yeah. So x plus i, x minus i. So you have a splitting field of q and qi. That's a minimum polynomial, right? X squared minus i, a mark plus one. To be x minus i, x plus i. Okay. Now I want to show you another example. You can stop sharing. The question would be, what is the degree of this extension? Yeah, what is the degree of this extension? So from here to here, you can go one step and then another step. So if I ask you the minimum polynomial here, that would be x squared, what is this? x squared minus 2 here. Okay, and x squared minus 3 here. There is a 2 already, so you extend the square root 3. Sometimes you can just easily see they're right for here, but sometimes it's not that easy. Okay, so from here to here, you have this, from here to here, you have this. So the basis is one square root two. The basis here is one square root three. So the whole basis will be one square root two, square root three, square root six. So the degree of this, oops, is four. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so for exercise twelve, For exercise 12, you can see Hana? Yes. Okay. So exercise 12, show that the given number is algebraic by finding fx such that f alpha is zero, right? It's very easy. So you just let alpha equal and then find square or whatever until all the coefficient is in Q. Alpha is much plus square root two, alpha minus one is square root two, alpha minus one square is two, alpha square minus two, alpha plus one is two, alpha square minus two, alpha minus one is zero. So fx is x squared minus x minus one, something like this, yeah? 
So you can try and do this for all. You have to find fx such that f of alpha is zero. So your answer should be like this. What is your fx? Then you can do the second one. Alpha is one plus i. So alpha minus one is i. And then you square, you get rid of the i. So you get all the coefficient in q. The third one, something that we did earlier, you square, right? You square. So alpha is this, alpha squared is this, and then you cube and then you square. <laughs> All right, and, and the degree will be the degree, like this one. Then you can find the degree. The degree will be all the polynomial. And then classify whether alpha is algebraic or transcendental. All right, so, and then find the degree. So you have to, do like what I did here just now, whether you can find or not the polynomial until the coefficient is in F, right? If you cannot find it, meaning is transcendental. If you can find it, it's algebraic, right? And show that this is irreducible, meaning this is Z3, okay? The polynomial is reducible if you can factor or there is a zero. So in this case, Z3 has only three elements, zero, one, two. If you plug in zero, you get one, right? You plug in zero, you get one. You plug in one, you get two. You plug in two, you get five, which is two. So you will never get a zero in Z3. So that is how you show the polynomial is irreducible. Because you cannot find any zero, you can not factor. Yeah, that's reducible and irreducible. Okay, everyone, take care. Bye-bye, assalamualaikum.